All right, so I hope you guys have your notebooks. You've got a pen and paper because the thing that I know is if I take notes, I absorb way more than when I don't. So I hope you're ready. Uh, in the chat, tell us where you're from. I wanna know what cities and states we have on the call. And thank you for being here on a Friday. Uh, I will keep working to admit people into the call. Um, but listen, let me go ahead and set this up. Brenda Donaldson and I go way back. Uh, we met at my very first core summit event in 2010. Um, Brendan is somebody that I just got immediately. It's like brother from another mother. Um, I, his jokes just keep me laughing forever, but our, our obsession is about helping people become professional salespeople in our industry. I remember hearing early on that the best loan officers, the best technicians, the one that works the hardest does not mean the highest paid loan officers, right? So how do we not only be great technicians, but how do we become highly paid professionals? You guys all know this is a sales job, right? I think that's going to be the reason that people get out of this business. It's not because they can't handle closing one loan a month. It's because they'll wake up one day and go, oh my gosh, this is a sales job. I hate sales. I'm not that person that's going to keep improving my craft, leaning in, likes to get rejected, likes to understand the art of people and how to do that. So this is going to be very sales focused, goes right along with fanatical prospecting and what we've been working on. But Brendan and his partner here, Michael Anthony, Brendan's in Nashville, Michael's in Atlanta, Georgia. Over the last several years, they've created something called the Smart Start Presentation, which is a branded presentation for your pre-approval meetings. And I have loved getting a chance to learn about what they do. They have an academy. Um, very inexpensive coaching that they do every other Friday. But because Brendan and I have been collaborating a ton and I just went to Nashville and visited his office and saw how he coaches his guys and how his office runs, I've been really moved um, by the work that you guys do, Brendan and Michael. So I just want to finish off and, and then shut up by saying, look, I want you to look at these different parts and pieces and write them down and think about where you're at. You've got the first 15 minutes of uh, meeting a client, of intake of the loan app, of setting the expectations, of building rapport. Who does that on your team? Is it consistent every single time? Are you saying the same things? Is it a powerful, like, is it memorable? Are you making an impression in that first 15 minutes, in that first five minutes, right? What does that part look like? Then the next part is your pre-call to pre-approval process. Again, is it consistent? Do you have a process? Do you have a flow? Do you have a teammate? Do you do it? Do they do it? What does that look like? How dialed in is it? And then next is your pre-approval meeting. Are you having a powerful presentation? Do you treat it like a presentation, like you are on show, that this is when people decide whether or not they're going to work with you is in that pre-approval meeting. Um, and then, uh, you know, then there's the escrow part. Yeah, great. And then there's the post-closing. Are we truly sticking around to be lenders for life? Are we providing real value to help people mm -hmm. in building wealth in real estate? So over these four classes, we're going to talk about those various segments. I know today we're going to talk a lot about the, the big boulders, Brendan, the foundations of like, how do you create a raving fan? How do you have a referral-based business and how do you become referable? So uh, let's just kick it off. Let's go right into tactics and get after it. Nice. Shayla, thank you. Um, I just want to introduce Michael, Anthony. Michael and I go back for to 2010. He ran a mortgage uh, group that was kind of a sweatshop, Michael. Yeah, you know, mid 90s, early 2000s, slinging refis, you know. The old, slinging the old refis, thing. going door to door. So Michael and I started working at the same company in 2010 and he completely revamped his business. He and I really, he's in Atlanta, I'm in Nashville, and his business partner is the office manager, Michael's the top producer. And, and we just started really in 2014, right around 14, Michael, um, yeah. we, we every Friday would jump on a call from 8.30 to 9.15. And we created this thing, like this diagram that was like, hey, here's everything we want to work on, but let's just pick a box. And Michael, wouldn't we pick the the, the topics like every like right before the call. And then it was whoever joined, we opened it up. And so flash forward, we figured out something just recently 
that in the last six months, any of you on this call, I want you to have a blank piece of paper. Michael and I might bounce back and forth. Shayla might uh, kind of interject some things. I want you to take a bunch of notes, like she said, and I think this, any loan officer right now, like all the big numbers from before, whatever number you heard, 100 million, 200, 400 million dollar producer, it doesn't matter anymore. That's over. We're in the day of two loans a month to 10 loans a month is, you know, th that's in the range of relatively being a professional. But here's the deal. Th this market now is completely different. People are scared. I'm in Nashville. We have a booming market. We've got multiple bids. Michael's in Atlanta. You guys can chime in on your markets when, if you want. But like the, the, the thing right now is clients are more scared than they've ever been. They're more scared than they've ever been about making a decision, about leaving the current three and a quarter rate to go to seven and a half and look at their budget. So if our job now more than ever has changed from salesperson to consultant, I'm going to go backwards in time, in my mind, close my eyes, 1996. I got in the business in 95. In 1996, I saw a guy on a stage. You may not know him. You may know him. Joe Stump is his name. He comes in. It's a free event. Tyson's Corner Marriott, Northern Virginia. Uh, it, Tyson's Corner is a little area right there off the Beltway. And he walks up on stage and he's doing this impersonation of training a dog. I'm dying laughing. And then he slows everything down and it's a room of realtors and lenders. And he goes, guys, I want to tell you something that'll change your life. I want you to write this down. This is the first thing you're going to write down on this piece of paper. I want you to write this down. Your decisions are easy when your values are clear. Your decisions are easy when your values are clear. I just projected it out there. I'll, I'll internalize it. My decisions are easy when my values are clear. There's going to be a homework assignment here. And I want you to say that to yourself. If you want to change from a, from a salesperson to a consultant. Your, your decisions will be easier when your values are clear. And I think it starts there. So I wrote this down. I said this. I wrote myself some notes. Your decisions on what to say to your leads and referrals and how you say it and when to say it to your referrals are very clear when you know what you value. The reason why loan officers are chasing scripting and magic words to say and what they're going to say is because they're not clear on their value. Therefore, the dance around how to get someone to say yes to your loan terms is all you think about. You think about a dance, but that's not what it is. When you shift gears and you want to be a consultant and you want to define, and we're going to do this now, and Michael's going to help. When you want to define who your ideal client is, who your ideal referring source is, as in realtor or financial planner, and then the last thing that you define is how you want to be referred. What does someone say to put you on a pedestal? We're going to go through that and share it. And I'm going to tell you, if you haven't done this in a while, it'll be nice to redo it because you're going to either reignite the flame of like why you're doing this or you're just a salesperson. And I don't like, by the way, I'm not offended if you're a salesperson and you close 10 loans a month. You just don't do what I do. You don't do what Michael does. You don't do what Shayla does. And you don't do what a lot of consultant-based loan officers do that make their business consistent. And let me, let me scratch all of this. It makes them happier. So there's a book, You Stole My Thunder, Shayla, Raving Fans. He, ready? Here's the order, Shayla. Improve 1%, know what your clients want, and then figure out what you want, right? That's the order, right? Yes. No, no, I baited you. Michael, the order is improve 1% and then know what your client wants and then figure out what you want, right? Know what you want first, obviously. 
Know what you want first. If you read the book, it says, know what you want first. Then the next thing is, know what your client wants. Then the whole concept of the book is improve 1% to close the gap. Because if I say, I think every one of my clients wants to eat blueberry cheesecake out in my lobby and sit with me and break bread before they do a loan app, and then no one wants to do that, I'm, I'm lost. So before we do our exercise, there's another book. It's called The Challenger Sale. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of it. I see some hands, I'm gonna click through. I see two hands on the first screen. Michael Bales says he knows. John, cool, looking through on third screen. Can't see anybody, there. there nobody's on live camera. So here's the deal. The book was the actual study of results of salespeople. They went through complex sales of 400 companies. They did it for a three-year study. And then they went in a room and they said, okay, in the top 10% of all salespeople, here's our study. So they divided it into five people, five types of salespeople. And they said, hey, there's a relationship builder. There's a hard worker. There's a problem solver there's a lone wolf, and there's a challenger. And then they broke down the personality traits or the, the selling traits of those subsets of people. And I'll read it to you real quick because I think it's so important to know, well, it won't pull up. Oh, well, I had it pulled up. I'll find it in a second. But here's the thing. This is the most important part. The, they took the names of the, of the people and the traits. And then they went back to the CEOs and they said to the CEOs, who do you want to build? Uh, I found it, by the way. They said, who do you want to build your company around? And 90% of the CEOs said the relationship builder. Guess who came in last place in the top 10% in terms of a personality trait or a sales trait? It was the uh, relationship builder came in last place, then the hard worker, then the problem solver. Second, like in second place was the lone wolf. And in first place was the challenger by a 40% margin over the lone wolf. So all the CEOs said, wait, holy shit. We just told you we want our company built on relationship builders who, here's the here's the bullet points. Uh, they, they um, want to make friends with their clients. They like to build advocates, build advocacy. They like to create relationships with their prospects through building rapport. That's the description. So if that fits any of you, okay, statistically speaking, you're going to lose out to a challenger like 60% of the time. So the nuts and bolts of the book, and I'm diving back into it, and Shayla, you, me, and Michael, I think, and I'll, I'm going to spare like the definition. But I will say this, we all need to go back into the analysis of it because the biggest thing it talks about is that you can build a challenger. You can actually train a challenger. You can take a relationship builder and work on specific traits to become a challenger. And what the challenger fundamentally believes is that their clients don't actually know what they want. That's and true. By the way, when I read the book, I was like, I've been thinking that the entire time. Here's the funny thing. We've got about 30 financial planners showing up next Friday to our event. I'm going to be talking to the head of the Managing Partners Association of Northwestern Mutual, a guy at the top of the food chain in Milwaukee. When I talk to him on Tuesday, I already know I know way more about real estate. And if he asks me any question, he can make $10 million a year, but he doesn't know what I know. So if he says, hey, I got a question about a mortgage, my immediate assumption is, he doesn't know anything. I'll tell him what he wants after I do these three things. I teach him something. I tailor my performance to his needs. And then I take control. That's what challengers do. They teach, they tailor, and they take control. So if you've taken some notes, here's exercise number one. We're going we're gonna to basically time this for about two minutes. So here's the biggest thing I want you to write down. I want you to be as descriptive as possible 
The time is 117. So we're 17 minutes in. I want you to write down my ideal client is. And by client, we're talking about a mortgage client. And by ideal, what I would like you to write out is as descriptive as possible as you can. And I'm going to play Beethoven's number seven with Shayla's permission. That's one of my favorite symphonies. And I want you to write it out. And then what I'm going to do is call on some of you. I just want you to hear what other people's ideals, clients are, and how descriptive they get. I don't want you to write nine paragraphs, but I don't want you to write, they have a heartbeat and they need a loan. <laughs> I, I want you to have some description around this. This is not Nike, just do it. This is detail. So here we go. We're going to break for about a minute and a half, two minutes. We can't hear your Beethoven, Brennan. You hear it? Oh, it's okay. You can't hear that? Uh-uh. It's number seven. All right. So that's, I got a minute and 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like for someone, um, Michael, since you had a head start, um, we did this on our Smart Start Academy two weeks ago. Go ahead and read yours first because you're, you, you know, sure. I want to hear it again. Okay. So my ideal client. So they're a married couple with two school age children. One's a project manager. The other's a teacher. They're looking for a home in better school district, larger home, wondering if they, if they need to sell their current house before buying the next. They, they value information and detail. Um, and also value, value the relationship we're, we're going to build. They complete the All About You form in advance. They come to my office for the Smart Start meeting. Once the meeting's complete, they're educated, they're committed, and they're ready to start viewing property. Sorry, I bursted. I, I should have I should have picked you last. Um, who's, who's looking frisky? Scott, what was yours? Scott Chaplin. Um, I had Mary, young kids. Uh, career oriented, makes two hundred thousand dollars a year, and understands the power of building wealth through real estate. Nice. Um, who wants to go next? Shayla, you wrote something down. I'll call on you. I did, and and I've played with the ideal client of a loan officer since I'm sure. recruiting loan officers as my client at the moment. So I want a great technician, somebody who truly cares about their clients, a great communicator that can be bold, direct, and compassionate. Um, a team player, somebody who's going to show up, lean in, be honest and loving. Somebody who's willing to be courageous, coachable, and really desires to learn and grow. Man, love it. Really good. Um, Anita, your ideal client. It's I, So I wrote down clients who are ready to purchase a home right away. A couple who has 50K in the bank, knowledgeable, who is looking for a knowledgeable and professional loan officer that want to know about the best program options for themselves, 
and they give me all their documents right away and respond very quickly to myself and my team. Nice. I like it. Um, Matthew Lagiglia, what, who's your ideal client? My ideal client is a professional that has a positive attitude, analytical, honest with me and themselves, diligent, timely, family person that value uh, the relationship and information and have an open mind. Nice. Um, just looking at, I'm looking at faces and eyeballs. Michael Bialis, who's your ideal client? Um, my ideal client is somebody who's looking in the two hundred to $800,000 price range, open to guidance, takes direction well, values the what I bring to the table over price, is referred to me the right way, and has a strong why. Nice. Catherine Gardner, who's your ideal client? Hey there. Um, my ideal client is a coachable borrower who sees value in working with a 20 plus year veteran who views a business relationship with an infinite mindset, valuing the ongoing opportunity as much as the transaction, their influencers in their community, and they have a large family of college age children. Nice. Love the description. Jody Longley, who's your ideal client? She does, she's not. Jody, you're on mute. She's dealing with a loan fire right now. Melissa, Barney, who's your ideal client? I was perhaps not as descriptive as some. I wrote friendly, open, communicates well, appreciative well-employed, enough assets to meet their goals, good enough credit to meet their loan type goals, engages with me throughout the process and knows what they want or committed and responsive. Nice. Um, anybody else? I, I don't care. I, I'm trying to find people that look like they're ready to answer. John Lamos. Well, somebody like I closed recently, he, uh, Maxed out FHA in my price range in my county is uh, 645K purchase. Okay. So 680 credit score, 35K in assets, employed for two years if um, self employed or if a W 2 employee. I'll just take uh, an offer letter and, and uh, close them, you know, with a paycheck stub. Um, so, yeah, just basically the ideal FHA. Okay. Got time for one more. Who, who likes theirs? Adam raised his hand. Go ahead. Hey, Brendan. Uh, looking for people open to consulting, employed and saving money. They value advice. They're referred to me. They live within their means. They want to grow their wealth. They're not a know-it-all. They're committed to buying, and they're buying between 600 k and $4 million purchase price. Nice. Like it. I'll read you guys mine. My ideal client is a First-time buyer or move-up buyer who is initially seeking advice uh, to buy a home and to learn the best way for their specific situation. An initial consultation sounds very appealing to them, and they're immediately willing to meet and see the value of that meeting held. So, and that would be the next steps. We'll talk about that, I think, a week or two weeks from now. Um, all right, so here's what I want to tell you guys. I think some of you with your ideal client, and this is just feedback in general, like who wouldn't want to lay down client that's ready to give us their documents right away and listen to what we have to say? What I want to challenge you on is that your ideal client is someone that you feel so good giving them advice, in my opinion, in some way, shape, form, and teaching them that like you're so comfortable in that role. And if you had to take a banner out on the street and say like, scream it to the world or tell anybody, like that's who you would want every single time. So John, when you did that super descriptive FHA, like if I was at a bar, and you met me and said, hey, my ideal client is, uh, F Wait, hold on a second, the FHA loan limit is 624. And in my county, you, like you went into all this stuff, like 
you want 20 people in a room to know in 10 seconds or less. Does that make like, I want it to be a little broader maybe. And, and so that someone goes, oh, I know those types of people versus I don't even know what FHA is. Now, feedback to all of you, play with this. Whatever you first wrote is kind of what's coming out of you. Nobody does this. We might be the only 75, 77 people in America that are loan officers that are writing today are ideal clients. This isn't an exercise that people slow down and work on their business on. So if you didn't like your initial answer and you heard some other ones, play with it. Shayla wrote out her basic loan officer, like who she's going after. And I think Shayla, when's the last time you did this? Yeah, well, I worked, I've worked a lot on my core values for our group. And so, and I talk about them and I have them printed and I've got rhinos to catch them. <clears throat> so I work on that a lot. But I, what I loved about you, what you said, Brennan, was it was really simple. And it was, you know, it was a move up or first time home buyer that want advice. And the best way to learn is to have initial consultation and they immediately see the value of that consultation. That's all you're really looking for. I'm not yeah. looking for a certain price point. I'm not looking for no. a certain demographic. I'm not looking. I'm looking for people who want advice and are willing to come to a consultation. That to me is was like brilliant. And I think if I were to pare my loan officer down, it'd be the same. I'm looking for somebody who desires to grow, who is open minded, and who is courageous and willing to learn something new. Right. Um, I'm not looking for somebody that's 100 million or that's 42 years old like I am, that's male or female or you know, smells like roses, you know, um, it can be much simpler, I think, because truly if they are open to a consultation and, and value advice, all of us would love that client. Right. I think one of the things about our business, Shayla, is that anytime we're talking about an ideal client and this next exercise, we're going to go into the ideal realtor. It's always something where that initial engagement is almost effortless, like dating. Like it's, it's like the business chemistry happens pretty quickly and there's not this pursuit. True story. I pursued a realtor, the number one agent back in 1997. I was still in Washington, DC. I wrote this guy notes. I did Monday motivational calls and I eventually wrote him a letter with a $20 bill. And I said, Mark, you did a hundred million last year. If you read this letter for one minute, this $20 is worth your time. I want to get a meeting with you. And so he calls me in. He, literally, I get a phone call and he calls me. He goes, Brendan, I'm giving you your 20 bucks back, but come to my team meeting on Tuesday and talk to my team. His name's Mark Flesher, Long and Foster, DC. He was a disc jockey. He was the biggest realtor at the time. He was doing 100 million when no one was doing 100 million. I go in, I have the team meeting. I make it on the list. I start getting this call. Ring, ring. Hey, Mark. Hey, how's it going? Oh, um, so you have a doctor? Okay. Oh, okay. Wait, I can't talk to the doctor? You want me to tell you what my 5-1 arm on a 750 loan amount on a million dollars? Okay. He literally was rate shopping me. He was the realtor rate shopping me before he would send you to the client. Crazy. I lasted four months. I did one deal for a, one of his junior buyer's agents because she referred me her friend. I never got any looks. And I was always like, be careful what you dream about this realtor that one day is going to be amazing or this client that you're pursuing over and over and over and over. Because if it's not, the chemistry isn't there and they don't fit into your ideal, they're most likely not worth your time. So Shayla, in your world, the sooner that loan officer comes into you, and, and, and likes what you're talking about and meshes with all your values, this long time pursuit of an LO, like throw those people to the, to the wolves. So, so glad you said that the initial, the initial engagement feels effortless. And I think that's yeah. what we all feel. And I will tell you in leading this um, fanatical prospecting, Brendan, we probably have a lot of people on this call who aren't just loan officers, uh, which is really oh. fun to think about this at a broader scope. But you know, I had somebody yesterday approach me, doesn't work for me, um, but I had a branch meeting and he was there for something else. And he like just jumped into a coaching conversation. And he said, how do I not beg for business? Like, I feel like my job right now is to just beg for business. And I was like, 
whoa, 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 this isn't about begging. You know, another, another um, loan officer of mine who's, I don't know, probably 62 was like, I just feel like so many people are younger and I'm 62 and can they really relate. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 right? It's really about that energy exchange. And like what you talked about, when you find people who value the things that you value, it is smooth, it is effortless, and it feels good. And the stress in our business, in any business, is when we're trying to take somebody that values something different and put them into our lives or into our business. And the quicker that we can know what is a hell yes, the quicker we can see those people that are a hell no. Because if it's not a hell yes, it's got to be a no, right? Now, I know that we're in this this time where it's hard to be abundant-minded. It's like, there's only four leads. There's only four opportunities. Like, I've got to take everything I can get and I've got to sacrifice. Yes. However, what, what I love about what we're talking about, why I felt urgency to have Brendan and Michael do this, is because you've got to believe so firmly in what you have to value, what you have to bring to the table as a professional and what your presentation is that you hold firm on that, that you're like, yeah, I know what your goals are. You don't know what you want. You're not saying that of course, but I have a solution for you and get people to see if they'll keep moving down the track. So let's jump into the next one, which is the idea. Yeah. Referral, referral so Michael, when, when we did this last time, the second transition in valuing things and and becoming a consultant is deciding who do you want to value in the real estate space as a realtor, as a financial planner, a business partner. So I don't know how to turn this up more, but I want to go, I'm just going to put a timer. So here is the question to you. My ideal referring source or my ideal realtor partner is, and then be as descriptive as possible. If you're not in the mortgage business, Whatever you sell, whoever that like B2B partner is that can then refer you people for your product, we want to describe them. So my ideal realtor is, let's go. We'll go for 90 seconds to two minutes. Ideal referral partner, right? Yes. Okay. I'll start with you again, Michael. Sure. Um, We're describing our ideal realtor or referral partner. Okay. So realtor for me, uh, she's been in the business for four years. We've we've worked together for three of them. She's what I call a rising star. She has great connections from her past corporate job and looking to grow her business. She trusts me. She refers me exclusively and knows the value of an in-depth consultation with her clients. She's also fun and lighthearted. She has trophies on her desk and hunting for more. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> By the way. He's a real I, person. Her name's I know Kelly. her here and I love her here too. We want, we want to clone her. We want to clone her. Marissa, who is your ideal referral partner? You laughed. I see your smile. Sorry, I'm tech illiterate. I couldn't find the mute. 
Um, my ideal referring source is a realtor who has a large sphere of influence from college who trust them and are ready for their opinions and advice um, and are eager and ready for advice. Nice. My ideal client was much better. Your ideal client was much better. You get to read that next time. Okay. Um, let's go to somebody I hadn't called on. Uh, Terry, your ideal referring partner. Okay. Uh, my ideal referring partner is a professional who deals with other people's finances uh, as their trusted advisor is open to learning new options, likes detail and information, and is a networker and a referrer. Mm. Excellent. I'm going to page three. Mark Simonson, can you unmute and give us your ideal referring partner? All right. Someone said they could go. Anybody chime in? Yeah, Jonathan Huffman, come on up. All right, not sure on my video. It is not working today, but here we go. Someone who trusts my knowledge and care for clients and believes I will make them look good. Woo! That's clean. Mm, nice. Thanks. What about, I want to pick Carrie, Carrie Adams. What do you got, girl? Oh, that makes me nervous. <laughs> So I put trusting, loyal, a go-getter, a communicator, and someone who at least has been in the business for three years. Kind of got their toes wet. Mm, very good. Anita, what did you put? Anita Spencer, who's your ideal referral partner? So I put my ideal refer partner is those people who have used me in the past that appreciate me for me. And what I bring to the transaction, which is knowledge, education, and outside the box thinking. Very mm. good. Like it. Shayla, who's your ideal referral partner? Um, I put this person trusts me, believes that my leadership processes and team can change lives, um, is influential and communicates directly so that this person will meet with me. Hmm. Nice, nice. Brandon. I'll read you guys mine. My ideal referring source wants me, wants a real estate partner and sees me as an asset to their business and their clients. They want their clients to be educated and they're not afraid to refer me when there's other competition. I respect their business and I want to refer them my clients. Now, here's what I've learned when I wrote this out. I've added a couple of things just on this call. If I'm not wanting to refer any one of my people on my accounts, it doesn't last. I don't know about you guys, but if you're not okay. willing to like refer that person some sort of business as in an opportunity for them, or at least connect them to other business people so they can get business from your network. I'm going to say that in these times, your relationships are dying. Here's why. There's some, there's some little credit union out there that's got a giveaway product that the realtor is desperate so they can get a paycheck. So they're going to products and things because they have to, or at least they think they do. Like Chelsea is losing a deal right now. She's on the phone. She's losing <laughs> a deal to a credit union and she's trying to win it back. Yeah, I love it. I'm just, Brandon, by the way, Chelsea, just, I'm just, yeah. I love Chelsea, uh, we're close. Here's what I would say. I love that you said wants to be a partner. I think we can all write that down. Is there's, what does a partner really mean if somebody's a partner to you versus if you're just a vendor? And that's, we've wow. talked a lot about that. When somebody treats you like a vendor, it's much different than when they treat you as a partner um, that believes that I'm an asset. This, I mean, you're really good at this, Brendan. You've thought about this for well over a decade. Yeah. Um, and it's not afraid to refer me. That's so big because if, if I want to trust somebody, I want them to trust me. They, they're going to put their reputation on the line to refer me. That's yes. a great partner. 
Um, and that I respect their business. That's a, that's a, that's a hell yes. If I'm like, you're so awesome. I want to refer you to my friends. I want to refer you to my husband. I want to refer you to my CPA that says a lot. Like I respect you. You respect me. Um, that's really powerful. Well, you know, this Shayla, we're crazy, right? If you and I are just talking and we talk the truth, we can talk about these crazy people that we've helped. And then eventually we go in a closet, yell and scream and then come out and go, oh, I feel better. But then like in the end, why did I have to yell and scream? Well, something went wrong. They're no longer my ideal realtor or referring source. And, and guess what I've been doing? I've been tolerating them. So I want to say this. This is crazy. Michael knows this. Michael, do you remember the first time we did your account pyramid cleanse? Shayla, you've never heard this. So true story. You have a one, two, or a three on happiness factor with a referring source. One, you're not really happy with them. They don't make you feel like you. Two, you're kind of neutral. Three, you're yourself and you love them. And yeah. then you have a one, two, or three on productivity. One, you're probably not getting the business you should. Two, it's like, okay. And three, it's productive. So we do this thing. It's it, This is not in the Smart Start Academy, Shayla. This is just something that actually my friend Dino invented. He said, let's cleanse your accounts pyramid. <laughs> and it was, we should sell it in a little like this, you know, Walgreens, the accounts pyramid cleanse. <laughs> so if you have anybody who treats you and you don't like yourself and the fun factor is a one, it was like, if you have a one and a one, where you're getting not that much business and they're not that fun, any 11s, you fire. Yeah. The, the struggle is, do you have a one in a relationship of fun, but a three in productivity? And yep. that's where you can get into like, you hate the realtor, but you hang on for the business. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying, sidebar, when you define your ideal realtor and then you we've defined our ideal client, Guess what you can share with any of your realtors right now after this call? Hey, I just got off a training call. My ideal client is da 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 And I want to help you define yours so I can get you more of your ideal client. And by the way, when I wrote out my ideal realtor, here's what I said, and you fit all those boxes. Yeah. All yeah, right. Hey, the litmus test is when you get the call from them and you see their name and they're numbered, are you excited to pick it up or do you want to be like, oh gosh, here we go. Right. Yeah, here we go again. This yeah. is, and this is goes back to prospecting. <clears throat> this is why yeah. you have to be a fanatical prospector and you've got to meet a lot of people. Cause if you don't meet a lot of people, then you've got to deal with what you got to deal with. And that, and by the way, look, but, Shayla, the value of what you've been teaching in this <laughs> fanatical prospecting and just going for it and literally not worrying about the consequences when you guys, as uh, I'm talking to more of the loan officers here and not the other business people, but the other business people, it's the same. When you see 11s and you're like, I got to fire these people, or you really want to fire a 13 where they're really productive, but they make you hate yourself. That means you've got to put people at the bottom called new prospects, ring, ring. Hey, Jonathan, Brendan here. I saw you on MMI. I saw you on LinkedIn. I saw your billboard. I, you know, whatever your pickup line is to go meet them. Obviously, you do more of that, and then you can replace people. It's one forty-five. And not not only replace people, guys, but you you will find awesome people out there. We have to believe that there are clients out there who would die to work with us, who will be so grateful, who will write those reviews that we all love and live for, who will be crying at the closing table, who will be buying you that six pack of beer at closing that make you laugh, belly laugh, and during a transaction, they are out there. And you've got to believe that and you'll find that. Same thing with any realtor partners, whatever your business is. There are people out there with high integrity that really care, that are super committed, that are fun as shit. You've got to just meet enough people to find them. And when you do, you're going to be like, oh, I wish they were all like you because that was so generative. And I think what most of us have not done the last four or five years is we had enough business. So we just dealt with what we're dealing with. <clears throat> and you might be 62. And you find this person that's just awesome, who's 29. It doesn't matter what age gap is. Energy is energy. And when you have alignment of energy, it's magic. And it feels good. And it's energizing. So meet more people, but know what you're looking for. And you'll find more of what you're looking for. So What's I want to tell you. So here's the third exercise. And then we'll have a little bit of Q&A on, on 
on some value building with initial leads. So the last thing I want you to write out is I want you to write out in your perfect world when anyone out there is talking about you and your services and referring you, what is the perfect way you want to be referred? I would love it if it was three or four sentences. Go ahead. We're going to go for two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. Michael, I hadn't asked you this one. I keep asking you first, but I want to hear how Michael Anthony wants other people to refer him. So it sounds something like this. Uh, let, me, let me introduce you to Michael. He and I have been working together for years. He and his team are the best. He will take the time to educate you on the market, understand your needs, and find the best solution for you. He has a high level of integrity, and he's the best lender I know. Nice. Andre? When an agent, friend, or colleague finds out someone is interested in buying a home or refinancing, they think of me, give them my contact information, and ask if I can reach out to them. Okay. Remember, it's how you want to be referred, so you're writing it as if you're the realtor. So, like, Dear client, I want you to call Andre because of whatever. So maybe change. You described it in almost another person person. I want it to be the person referring you, like what that text looks like. Um, Marissa, you didn't like your second answer. I'm going to give you a third shot here. Come on. Okay, come on. okay so I would um, want to be referred. I would want them to say, hey, call my girl Marissa. She is the person I would go to for my personal loan if I was buying a house right now and she gets shit done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drop an S bomb. No. So, did you write that or just say that? No, I, well, I wrote something else, but then he started talking and I rewrote this. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I, what did you write? Just out of curiosity, I want to hear what you wrote. I wrote, as a knowledgeable professional who gets shit done and knows the business inside and out. Hmm. Okay. Is not quite me. So I tweaked it. We'll work on the a little bit of the professionalism, but I like the I like the grit. Um anybody, any just anybody who wants to volunteer. I'll go. Oh my go God, you need to you need to call Adam. He takes the time to understand you. He understands your needs first, and then he provides you the best options. He's also been critical to our success with making offers with listing agents. He's always competitive and he's highly communicative. Nice. Good. I like good. that detail. Anybody else want to go? Shayla, 
How do you want to be referred? Okay, this is still back to recruiting. Um, let's say, so th this person runs into somebody that is saying that they have big goals and they're positive and they're hungry, but they feel stuck or they feel misunderstood. Yeah. So the, the referral source would say, oh my gosh, you need to meet Shayla. She is so easy to talk to. She's inspirational and highly energizing, but her real skill is being strategic and understanding you, your strengths and your goals and helping devise a plan with you to be successful and then coaching you to get there. She's helped six people earn over a million dollars a year and dozens more earn over $250,000 a year. Even brand new people that have learned mortgage from scratch have been really successful under her leadership. She's the best leader I know in the mortgage business. You have to just sit down with her and at least get to know her. Nice. Very good. God, I that was really helpful. By the way, by the way, yeah, you I and I butterflies. That feels a little uncomfortable, but it's good. yeah. You and I need to work on that one a little bit because I I want a little more tigress. Like she's got yeah. I got I got some things. But that's very good. That's very good. Um, I wrote this. Brendan is a va is very valuable to me and my clients. His approach to helping and educating my clients about their real estate decisions and mortgage decisions is unmatched. Go meet with him and be involved in his smart start meetings. And then you can decide what's best for you after that. Really good. Who, Very good. Who next? Who's next? Let's do one more and then let's talk about that initial phone conversation. Okay, great. Anybody jumping at it? Nope. Okay, Nobody's I'll go. Jumping. I'll go. Go ahead, Catherine. Um, all right. To be referred to not only as an excellent professional, but an excellent human being whose knowledge will ease the process and whose demeanor will ease your day. Okay. You want people to say that about you? Yep. Okay. You, you think I, that's hard? You think that's hard to believe? No, not at all. I just, yeah. I, <laughs> let me say this. We're working on things. Uh, everybody's an excellent human being. Right? I, how about this? When we're working on what's ideal for us, your first shot is your first shot. Sometimes crafting it so that someone can really put it out there for you and make it easy to put you on that pedestal. You know, when people say I'm a people person, aren't we all? So when I say, when you said I'm an excellent human being or whatever you just said, it's a little jargony. I want you to work on like what truly you believe is unique so that you're realtors and someone should refer you. So let's shift gears. Michael Anthony, yeah. when the phone rings and 99% of all of our leads are either referred by a realtor, a financial planner, a past client referral, maybe a current client referral, a personal friend, and they leave us a message and they call us and say, hey, I got your name. Can you call me back? I'm interested in a mortgage. Yep. We have that opportunity to make the first phone call. And I think the biggest thing, and we can talk about this on the next call next week as well, but the biggest thing that we, Michael and I have trained on over and over is how does that first five minutes sound? And I think the number one thing that we all need to understand today is that we just defined our ideal lead our ideal realtor, how we want to get referred, but you're going to get a call this afternoon and none of those people are going to know that. So it doesn't really matter yet. But right now, what matters is, is what kind of, what kind of exchange are you happen, having up front and how are you positioning yourself in the challenger sale to be able to teach them, to be able to tailor something to their needs once you're teaching and watching them and then to be able to take control. So rule number one, write this down. The initial phone call has only one goal. There's one goal. The goal is to set a meeting. The goal is not, hey, my name's Matt. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, you got my name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a lender. Hold on a second. Well, uh, I'm not in front of my Encompass file, but uh, Shayla, okay, so you're married. Well, great. You know, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get my other foot involved and I'd like to put up, I'd like to start taking a loan application over the phone. No, 
Your job is to establish a connection to want to meet with them. If any of you do long distance business, your job on that first call is to set an official teleconference via Zoom or whatever we're doing right here. Why? Because consultants don't answer the phone and give all their information away. In no high paid sales or complex sale does any human use the phone and the initial phone call to do all the work. If you're doing that, that's why you're getting shopped. That's why you're losing deals. That's why you're burned out. That's why you think your rates suck. Michael, what are your thoughts on the first five minutes of a call? Well, I would say, hey, the timing of the call, and we talked about this a few weeks ago, the first initial call, and, and Gloria Sell, we talked about this, she, her, her first call was too long. Like she had to start timing it. It needs to be no more than seven, six, seven minutes long, eight minutes long, right? The, the idea is build some quick rapport, triangle, the tr I don't know how much time we can go into, yeah. but you don't want to give away everything, right? You, you just want to build some quick rapport, triangle of trust of how they were introduced to me, right? Um, edify that referral partner. So solidify the triangle of trust and build some quick rapport, plant seeds to set the meeting. And, right. and, and ideally, try to book the meeting on the phone before you go into a lot of information. I mean, that's really the idea. And right. I learned that from you years ago, 10 years ago. I was, you know, when we were, you know, leads were falling out of the sky. We just wanted to, you know, take as much information as we could, get the pre-call pre letter out, you know, when they go on a contract, see what happens, right? But there is a there, there really is a science to that first call that we've been sort of working on and perfecting. And I've, I've taken a ton of of guidance and advice from you over the years, because I think you're the best at it. Um, but well, and here, here's the thing yeah. for all of you guys, the goal is to get face to face. Uh, Shayla and I have spent, and Michael have spent thousands of dollars on personal development, listening skills, and training. And we sat with a guy named Renee Rodriguez. And how, what percentage of, of communication is nonverbal and body language, Shayla? I think it's like 93%. Yeah, it's, it's some crazy number. Words are just 7% of communication. So if you're communicating on the phone, you have no idea what their body language, their nonverbal cues are. You don't know how nervous they are. You're talking probably 80, 90% of the time. And really what I found is this, Michael, Shayla, and anybody else on this call, when you sell on the phone, you're just basically a knowledgeable processor. That's all you really are. Right. Hi, thanks for calling me. Oh, great. I'm going to send you my Encompass link. And then what you're going to do is fill out the information and then it's going to come to me. And then I'm going to pull your credit. And then when your credit comes, I'm going to go into Optimal Blue and I'm going to pull my rates. And then I'm going to go to a loan estimate and tell you what you qualify for. That's what people do at Quicken. That's what, if that's you, you're just a high paid processor. So we need to be consultants. So time is up. We're going to be very specific. The next call, we are going to do a quick role play of how to set an appointment for your consultative pre-qualification meeting. Your consultative pre-qualification meeting should have some standards and some things that you want to get across. And in the challenger mode, you should understand, hey, I want to teach these people something. I want to be able to tailor my performance and my presentation around what I've taught them and what I see. And then I want to take over at the end and close if I feel there's an opportunity. So today you got your ideal lead, your ideal referring source, and how you ideally want to be referred. Homework assignment, print them out, send them to Shayla, make sure you do this. And hey, uh, who was it? My girl, Marissa, you had your one with some F-bombs and some S-bombs, like clean it up a little bit and let's get it to where you can like say, okay, this is what I'd really want to send out to my referring sources. And any of you that didn't do it or kind of mentally, take the time to rewrite it and send it. If Shayla can see it, I think if you, if you put it on paper and then you put it out there in the world, you're going to start to see it come back to you. Hey guys, if you found this valuable, please put in the chat what stood out most to you. I just uh, I just want to see there is people on here that aren't loan officers. I want to see if this translated, but 
What was the biggest thing that stuck out that you're going to take and implement? And then we will log off. Um, Brendan and Michael, that was very powerful. I haven't done this work in a long time. And like you said, it's, it's the big rocks. So you got to get this right before we can sell the heck out of the presentation and blow away the presentation. Professionals don't sell over the phone. Yeah, that was loud and clear. That was great. Don't be a high paid processor. The purpose of everything is to book an appointment. Yes, my decisions will be easy when the values are clear. Thanks, Jess. Um, how you want someone to talk about when referring you. <clears throat> Separating the initial call in two parts. Divining the value of whom we want to work with. The homework again is to write that out, BC. So just really write it out, print it out, have it. Um, by the way, if you're single, write out your top 10 characteristics of what you're looking for in a mate. And I'm telling you, when you've actually thought about it and you know it is, you can attract that person in your life. It's unbelievable. The first five minutes being so very important. Yes, it's so good. Oh my gosh, we took a lot of stuff away from this. Thank you. I knew this would be mega valuable. Brendan and Michael, I know you guys do this on an ongoing basis with a group of people. Thank you for choosing to do a four-part series with me. I hope you guys will all come again next Friday and then we'll take a week or two off and then we'll have two more in October. But I would stick through the all four parts. I don't know how to get everybody recordings because I don't want to blast everybody recording. So um, please go, let me just put you on here to go register for the second one. That's probably the best thing that I can do is give you the meeting for the 22nd. Um, I'll just share it right now in the chat. You guys can go register and um, I think I can pretty easily go send everybody who attended uh, the deal. But if you're gonna wanna just do it now, put it on your calendar. It's going to be the same time next Friday, 11 a.m. Um, and yeah, we will send out the recording. You guys get, you guys see I'm trying to be efficient with my Facebook group and my newsletters and get you guys all the stuff that I do because I want, I just wanna provide so much value to you. But um, if, if you plan on being here next Friday at 11 a.m., just go in and register. Thanks again, guys. That was amazing. And Thanks, Shayla, for having us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. And Shayla, I think, again, ideal client, ideal referring partner, and ideal way you want to be referred.